Good hello and goodness me, it's TV Paint! This is my first proper time using TV Paint. The most traditional of the animation softwares, the most organic of the animation softwares. So, this is my first impressions. Let's see what it's like. Now, uh, keep in mind, this isn't a review, okay? <laughs> I'm pressing buttons to figure out what they do for the very first time. I'm gonna struggle, I'm gonna hit obvious snags. I can say straight up that this is a good program. It's a very good program. It does what it says it does. Uh, so please do not judge it on my experience here today. But what I hear it is like, uh, being a very organic and natural program that tries to replicate uh, more real-world mediums a lot more, is the difference you'll find compared to a lot of the vector animation softwares is that there is a lot less technical stuff going on. You know, the, the motion tweens, pegging, symbols, not a thing. This is a frame-by-frame -frame program. It's all bitmap. Basically, everything comes down to how good you are as an artist as opposed to how good you are at using and manipulating the software to your advantage. I'm seeing already, just looking at the sidebar over here, that most of the tools are different kinds of tools that you would typically find in a paint box, right? There's brushes, pens, pencils, erasers, different types of inks, etc. And apparently this program is stupidly customizable. So it's all about figuring out what sort of brush sense to what for yourself, and then you decorate the interface with, with your palette box, toolbox and things, right? So along with that, I'm assuming that when it comes to troubleshooting and problem solving, rather than trying to solve things at a technical level, you'll be thinking about how you would solve this kind of thing on a creative level. So if you make a mistake on paper or on a canvas, how you go about fixing that problem is quite different to how you would normally go about fixing something in a vector animation program. Uh, so I've stalled enough. I'm gonna try a few of these tools down here. At the moment it says pen brush uh, is there. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, so just getting a feel for some of these brushes as well. Uh, this one looks quite attractive. It's got a, ooh. It's, it's kind of speckly when I just draw it on the side there, but wow, this is probably one of, if not the nicest digital brush tool I have ever used. It just feels like a real world brush. You can see as well, look at these um, these little streaks that sort of appear inside of it. So if I were to make a swirly shape, you can see that the way I painted it was by going around. Whereas if I paint something going downwards, you can see the strokes going in the direction that I move them in. That's really cool. Because if, if this were a vector program, I'd, if I saw something like that, I'd probably be, you know, you wouldn't want that because it's about it being clinical. But here it's about it being artistic. And that's what real paint and mediums do, doesn't it? So you, you work with that and, and you use it to your advantage. Ooh, airbrush, that's nice. You press extremely lightly and it tints it to such a smooth degree that you can barely tell it's even, it's even done it. Wow. This is, this is really something because just watching it on the screen, you probably can't get a feel for it, but you can actually feel how these brushes work. It's quite something. It really is. Hey, look at this. Is this a tool history pull down there? That's quite nice. So now I've got a bit of a choice. Do I try and make an animation or do I just explore the tools a bit? Bit of column A, bit of column B perhaps? Hmm. Oh, okay, hang on. I see what's going on here. These are toolbar shoulder buttons. That's neat. Turn off layers, the whole thing goes away. So is that all just for saving screen real estate space? But then, what are all these? There's a whole bunch more that are turned off. Oh, we're gonna go find out what they are! Light table opacity. Remote con Oh, okay, playback controls. Cool, cool. Uh, navigator effects stack. So there is technical stuff going on. Would these effects work in a similar way that Photoshop does it? I wonder what level they go to. Oh, hang on, there's a pull down. Blur, color, oh wow, they're, they're very Photoshoppy. that's great. Blurs, color adjustments, distortions, keying. It's very intuitive, you can kind of just go through and see what you need and just kind of go for it. Oh, I can't wait to muck around with those, that's, that's awesome. Uh, anyway, image library, ooh, that's interesting too. I wonder how that works. Would it be a matter of storing things in the same way that you would with a symbol? 
or would it be for storing reference material and things? You know, being bitmap, would you put your backgrounds and stuff in here? Only time will tell. Guidelines, that could mean anything. Um, and share manager, that, I guess that's to do with sharing stuff. Ah, oh, it's nice being able to just turn it all off like that. Those are the brush tools under that, and up here is the, the main, <laughs> I was gonna say main panel, but that's literally its name, main panel. Open and close main panel. So each of these seem to have pull downs as well. So this one that I liked, if I go underneath here and change it to dot, what do I get? Oh, of course, so, so basically that's just uh, lowering the spacing all the way down. What does stroke do? What's the difference between stroke and what I had before? Oh wait, no, stroke is what I had before. Filled stroke. Whoa, okay. That's quite vectory, isn't it? <laughs> That's handy, I like that. Meanwhile, there's, okay, there's lines as well. Um, oh, look at the square, it comes with the big box of, s I like that too, yeah, the alignment tools, that's really nice. Two point circle, what's, no, let's get ambitious. Three point circle, what does that do? Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know what that, I, I got, I got carried away, let's, Ooh, kill button, that's good. I was erasing the whole canvas before. And there's a paint bucket tool as well. Of course there is, of course there is. Now, something I hear talked about all the time is how deeply customizable this all is. So, we've got this fun brush, but how do I go about making it? I'm sure I can move all these sliders around and, and customize what's here, but how do I make a new one? What's the bin? Oh, okay, so I just tapped and it added it. Is that, is that all I have to do? There's a drop down menu here too that, not a drop down menu, it's a collapsing menu. Hooray, hurrah, huzzah. Okay, so that's added a preset. Let's make something really whacktacular. 385. Whoa! Cool! <laughs> I like this program. Okay, so if I go to the bin and then just tap, that's that's added it, right? So if I go back to this, where do I get the old one? If I tap that, I get the new one. Hey, that works. Cool. Okay, time to make something. What do I do? It's gonna be something stupid. Real, real stupid. The main grab that I'm experiencing so far is this. You can see that circle was quite angular. It was octagonal almost. That's been happening whenever I draw something quickly. I'm expecting that there is some kind of control that I can adjust inside the program for something that makes processes more or less taxing on the hardware perhaps. Or maybe it's just my computer being a little bit old. But it has forced me to draw physically a little bit slower in order to get the shapes that I want. Almost being forced to approach things from a more artistic perspective uh, because I don't really yet have the luxury of cutting and pasting and moving artwork around very freely like I would in other programs. Uh, it could probably do it, but I don't know where that button is yet. Uh, one of my big hurdles was finding the onion skin. I eventually found it, as you can see. I'll explain how I did that in a mo. But I started with two keyframes, wings up, wings down, uh, and that transition also had the head from the right to the left, but I realized that I wanted there to be a full flap with the head facing one direction then a full flap with the head facing the other direction. The process is a little bit slow and steady, but that's okay, I feel that's what you need to do. I see people jump into a new software and try and use the techniques that they're used to and even the shortcuts that they're used to, and then when they can't work at the same pace that they're used to, uh, hit a wall and get frustrated very quickly. I think it's important to let go of those things, allow yourself to take your time to use the slower methods, and you will learn things at a natural pace and gradually build up new skills and learn new features and shortcuts to increase your productivity. So I copied and pasted the entire set of frames and erased the head and then went back and you can see now that I'm just drawing the head over and over again in very similar positions. Uh, but that was kind of fun. It was, you know, I kept things nice and organic, I guess. Overall, it was fun to be able to sketch an animation this way. I don't normally get to do it quite like that. And here you go, a simple animation of a, <laughs> of a loopy, flappy thingy. Uh, notice I set the exposure of every drawing to two. In the corners of each frame, I noticed that there's a box in each diagonal corner. Clicking and dragging on those allows you to extend frame exposure, so I set each one to two. I did that manually for each one. Maybe there's a shortcut for it. I don't know yet. 
Okay, so that was a fun little thing to do. Hit some hurdles, overcame some problems, learned some new things. So I'll show you a couple of the snags I hit along the way, how I overcome them, and other little bits I found. Particularly the onion skin feature. It was it was quite well hidden at first because it goes by the name Light Table. Everything is encompassed into the Light Table feature. Uh, but it was hidden in plain sight. This little light bulb here, all the notches leading straight vertically down from it is the is the onion skin for that layer so switching that on onion skin appears as it would in other programs uh, but if you press on the master one at the very top it brings up this panel here and it's quite self-explanatory I think you can see what's going on here rather than brackets you're presented with numbers and you can turn these on going in different directions and see the onion skin trailing off in either direction now, a uh, couple of interesting things. By default, it is set to image color, so it's just a natural fade off, but I found this to be very chaotic to look at. Uh, so I changed it to fairly easy to see colors. The amount of frames that you can see, as I said before, rather than brackets are individual buttons. So you can see exactly which frames you want to look at. This actually turned out to be extremely handy if I was working on individual parts of the character at any given time. It allowed me to see some images that were in the distance without being opposed by the ones that were neighboring to the frame that I was working on. Naturally, there is a gradual fade off as they go further into the distance and you probably figured this out already that that's represented here. Each frame has its own independent opacity slider, allowing you to create a stronger emphasis on a frame that you need to reference from. Notice on ones that are turned off, I can move them completely independently. Ones that are turned on, it gives a like an equalizer and in practice is quite nice really happy with this panel even just during this muck around thing i was using it a lot now aside from that i did stumble across a couple of really interesting things to do with the user interface you can see these uh, google maps checkmark things if i click on that it will become unchecked and rolling away from the panel the whole thing will collapse when you move your mouse over the section it will pop back open again so if you're working on a smaller monitor uh, that's quite nice because it gives you only the information when you need it. With that in mind, I discovered a secret panel <laughs> over here on the right. This opens up. I'll lock that open. And look at all these presets. These appear to be based on the tools that we looked at at the start. Pencils and brushes and things. So I believe that these can be moved around. You can apply your own presets and give them icons and do all sorts of cool stuff. So to close off this video, I thought, let's look at a few. Just want a new layer, I'll choose uh, this one. And, ooh, hang on. Is that, I think something might be going wrong. See, the texture is flickering about wherever I move my mouse. And yeah, that's validated down here. Is is it meant to be? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's nice. It's like a paintbrush. <laughs> wow. So you're telling me that I can set up custom brushes that flicker between a whole lot of different sorts of textures? Oh, wait, hang on, is that... It's mixing the colors! It's drinking the water! I like that. What do these other ones do? Okay, it's got a nice regular strict... Ooh, it's got a really nice pressure feel to it. And... Yeah, paint roller, good, good. Does that have its colors mixed as well? No, I guess it depends on the type of brush, so. Okay, so it's an <laughs> ink splotty thing. Spray, oh, that's making me nostalgic for MS Paint. Oh, hang on, it seems to be influenced by the colors around it as well. It went a little bit green before. Yeah, it does, it kind of speckles out some red. It picks up whatever's around it. A palette knife, oh, it mixes and moves things around. Oh, that's good. And all these different brushes. Okay, these watercolor, smearing watercolor, ink watercolor, and sponge painting. And, oh yes, that does seem to do what it says on the box, doesn't it? It feels very watercolory. That one's a bit spotchy. Oh yeah, wow, it does feel like watercolors. How oh, it takes influence from the colors underneath it. I wonder if it even dries over time. This seems to be another one that switches textures as you move it around. Very interested to see how you go about making a new brush like that. And this one seems to be influencing from colors underneath it as well. Very cool. So I'm getting a bit of a purple because there's so much red and blue on there. Wow, they've really captured the, the feel of traditional mediums quite well. 
This appears to be another blurring tool. Wow, it mixes things really evenly. This feels nicer than Photoshop, I must say. Tell me though, I've never really used the, the other traditional painting softwares like Corel and that. Um, how do you think it compares? Because when it comes to digital painting, I might just be sticking with this now. Okay, so there's some chalks as well. What are they like? Yep, that makes sense. So one thing that's really interesting that I'm finding with some of these brushes is how there is attention given to the weight. How hard you press on the tablet and when it suddenly becomes dark or when it starts to change, it does feel very, very traditional. And it's difficult to explain because when you give it a go, you, you can feel it. Like how this one here is giving the effect of a piece of chalk laid on its side as it moves across a page. And hang on, what's this one? Needed eraser. Yeah, it, it feels like that. How rather than just straight up erasing, it, it just sort of removes a bit of color. And the light, is that a finger? Is that? Huh, it does so. It smears the color around in just the way that it would if you were using your finger against some chalk. Okay, now these ones down here, I'm assuming are texture brushes, yes. So it's similar to the brush up here, but by using actual images is able to create all sorts of different effects. Now I stumbled across a similar feature before, which I believe is built up from this. There's a selection tool, in this case a lasso select, and whatever you choose, it will immediately create a brush out of what you just chose. I'm really looking forward to getting into learning how to create these brushes. It seems like it is a real backbone for what you can do here. Funny brushes. Oh wow, it just straight up paints hair. <laughs> how does it do that? It's got like a twisty shape to it. Whoa! I was about to turn the video off, but I just... <laughs> There's so many things to explore and see. Look at this one, it even changes direction with the brush. Okay, I'm gonna have to leave it there. I'm getting carried away. Thank you for joining me for my first experience of TV paint. There will be more personal experience things as I learn videos as they come, and hopefully soon enough some actual structured tutorials as well. I'm gonna go do a whole lot of research so you don't have to do as much research yourself. There's a link to the TV Paint website in the description below if you'd also like to have a muck around with this program and learn it alongside me. Thanks for coming along on this journey. Have some fun and I'll see you in the next one.